Duke. Duke, 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 we need to have a taste test. What do you think? I think it's really important that we know how these taste. So first we need experts. That looks like it can use some avocado right there. What you doing? Cracking almonds. Almonds? Yeah. Would you consider yourself a hunter or a gatherer? <laughs> gatherer. Yeah? Okay. That's Jerry Bear right there. And his lovely girlfriend, Simone. You guys look like avocado tasting experts. Would you regard yourself as such? I would. All right. Do you know about the Duke avocado? Uh, I don't think so. No? No. Ever watch YouTube? Once or twice. Well, it's all over YouTube. There's this guy that like went up and found the Duke avocado. It's a long story, but it's like probably one of the most cold hearty avocados there is. And uh, your, your uh, compadre here, otherwise known as your padre, uh, went up there and um, commandeered some from the actual trees. And these were actually ripe, probably ready to be eaten. Jeez, maybe a month ago, two months ago. Because right now it's almost December 1st. These are ready in September, but I did find some under the trees and I went to get some seeds. I have all this seed and uh, I've never actually tried this myself. So seeing that I can't cut and film all at the same time, I'm gonna give you an additional job to tasting in preparing our tasting here. That one's pretty hard, actually. I would wait a day or two. Let's see this one. This one's perfect. They're really ugly because they're like the last ones of the year. And um, they were preserved under the trees and most of them were all rotted away. In fact, these are uh, somewhat rotted, but there's still some good meat on them. Look, oh! So it looks like the seed uh, skin adheres to the fruit, which is always not the best thing, but you know, when you're trying to grow avocados in really cold places, uh, Beggar cannot be a chooser. Here's a seed which we will surely germinate. Um, you just kind of have to get over this like seed adhesion thing. Where's the tree? It's supposed to be really good. And you can eat the skin too, assuming it's not rotten. Uh, the trees are way up like four hours north of here, way up in the northern central valley. It's the most northerly commercial avocado grove in um, the uh, western hemisphere. Amazing. Yeah, so how are we doing? You gonna get some taste going for us here? Almost. Simone, what's your favorite kind of avocado? Don't say Hellas. That's the only type I know. Oh, come on, where have you been? The Duke. The Duke? Be my the Duke's gonna be your favorite? All right, Jerry, what's your favorite type of avocado? Can you name more than three? I can name several. Name as many as you know. Fuerte, Mexicola, Mexicola Grande, um, Haas, Duke. Um, Stuart? Yeah. That's all I got. Doing good. I don't think he's qualified to take over the company yet, but I think he's well on his way. <laughs> all right, so what are we going to do? Are you going to feed me or are you going to give, yeah. give me some of this here? All right, I'm going to do my own taste test. And you guys jump in. Thank you. Hmm. Probably good to eat it without the skin too to get a true taste of the fruit. Take a big chunk. It's good. Yeah? It's really creamy. Simone? It's you... good. It's really meaty. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It's rich, isn't it? Yeah. It's actually really, it's really rich for it. Thin skins typically aren't that rich, but this is a really rich avocado. This is really good. This is going to be great on my hot dog. Um, Anything remarkable you want to see? We're going to be selling these things. The most, this is one of the most cold hardy avocados. I'm going to put a link in the description box and how you can watch the video and the whole story about the Duke. Um, 
But things to know is, look, I'm up here at my ranch, extremely austere, hot, blue oak region. And wherever blue oaks grow, that means it tells you right there, it's super hot, super dry. We get incredible winds here. This is a really difficult climate. That's my unfinished arbor. Uh, difficult climate to uh, grow uh, avocados in. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna grow these here. We're gonna grow these here under these conditions from these seed, seed grown. The people who grew these grew them all from seed. Normally you don't grow things from seed, but when you grow something from seed, it's always more vigorous, grows more uh, faster, stronger, hardier than uh, you know any kind of grafted material because you kind of mess with the mechanics of the plant when you graft it. Um, and it slows the vigor down. So what are we trying to accomplish? We're trying to accomplish the hardiest, toughest, sun tolerant, inland, uh, wind tolerant, extreme weather tolerant avocado you can. And the way we're gonna do that is grow the hardiest seed there is, this duke that we know of, and we're not gonna graft anything on it. You can do it later if you want. But we're gonna sell these uh, things as, uh, and I'll take you out to the field where they're growing right now. We have the duke avocados. We don't have too many, we have limited supply. But anyway, uh, the people who grew these avocados, they didn't graft, they just seed produced them. And it's such an inbred population up there that they come out true to, true to form pretty much every time. So anyway, anything else you want to say? They're good. They're good, huh? You recommend them, great. I recommend it. All right, I'll get some, maybe put some almonds on my, on my, uh, no, maybe not. Avocados. Boom, throw them on there, there. All right, here they are. Okay, they're not completely under the hot blazing sun, but they're close. Look at this. This is the fabled Duke avocado right here. What's, what I find most interesting about the Duke is it doesn't have a really, really shiny, lustrous leaf. And I'll show you a, a little avocado to show you the difference. But it has almost like a felt-like feel to it on the bottom and a slightly felt top. But if you looked at it extremely closely, you'd see little fibers, because that's what it feels like. And uh, every single one of these trees up in the Duke Grove in Oroville look the same. And yeah, here's you know kind of a good example. It's just a really tough, almost leathery leaf. And not that incredibly dark green, but uh, here's a whole bunch of them. They're absolutely thriving here. Uh, these palms have filled out a little bit. They were, had more sun earlier. But um, yes, yeah, so they're getting a little bit. This is kind of how they would grow in the forest, really. They would uh, start out in these kind of conditions underneath uh, mother trees, and then they would grow up. So you can see there's no graft point on these trees. They're extremely vigorous and I just think that this is probably the best thing going if you live in a really harsh climate, whether it be really, really hot, windy, and especially if it's cold. I'm guessing these trees could probably handle down to 20 degrees or so and uh, take it. It'd be interesting to see how long it takes them to fruit. Uh, these trees are already two years old. They say it can take avocados oh, up to 10 years to fruit, but... But uh, I've heard other people that can fruit in two or three or four years. So we're going to do a little experimentation that way. Um, and uh, you can see how beautiful a tree it is. And uh, we have them here. The Duke avocados out of the Duke Grove in Oroville. Biggest trees right now are probably four feet tall. But by this time next year, right now it's getting real close to December 1st. I'm not sure, like, I think it's November 29th. And uh, four feet tall, I expect these things. And they're, they're continuing to grow even through winter. They're actually putting on growth. They have flushes of growth. So I expect these things to, here's one that's a little taller. I expect these things to be probably, you know, pretty big by this time next year. And they're growing really fast and really vigorous. It's that seedling high, uh, vigor that's kind of important in this regard. The seedlings that are ungrafted tend to get really vigorous. 
And of course you could, this tree is used as a rootstock for other varieties. And you could potentially just plant this tree out, get a really vigorous tree going. And you feel that? Listen to this. That's just a totally different, tough, leathery, stiff avocado leaf. That's a, just a totally different thing. Uh, but you can get these things going, or if you have a tough location. And uh, then later on, once the tree gets vigorous, you can graft to other varieties onto it, use this as the mother stock. And it'll produce its own avocados. It'll be really good. So there you go. Okay, so I'm up here with my little kato tree. There's a few videos on this tree out there. And my little kato tree uh, seems to not want to be a little kato tree anymore. It wants to be a big kato. It's getting big. <laughs> Look at how big it's getting. Got no fruit this year. And whenever they get no fruit, energy's got to go somewhere. So where did it go? It went into new growth. And it went crazy this year. So it'll be interesting to see if it uh, sets a good... Uh, crop this year and if so how much but anyway I brought you up here the uh you can see the little cotto dark green kind of glossy foliage this is the difference with the duke see the duke foliage is just it's more roughly see the ruffledness that doesn't happen on the little cotto put them side by side here see the difference there um and I think it's actually a lighter green color. And that might be because it just does better with, you know, the higher light concentrations might cause, you know, well, didn't cause, it's just a freak of nature that this one is doing so well because of uh, natural selection up in Oroville. But Oroville has extremely high light intensity like it does here in winters. And a, a plant that uh, has a lighter color is going to reflect more light to the atmosphere. It's really hard to tell, but um, it does have a lighter color. I don't know, I can't really see that probably. But um, it is a very different leaf. This one, that's the noise it makes. And then this one, let's see here. Can you hear that? It's just tougher. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, there's the Duke versus the Little Cotto for whatever it's worth. And, uh, but I do, I'm going to stick by my guns and say that it is a very different, distinctive leaf. There you really see the color difference. See the lighter color of the Duke against the Little Cotto? Yeah, so it's, and it seems leathery and just more and tougher. Of course, Little Cotto's thriving here, so that's a good thing. But uh, the ultimate, I think, Central Valley avocado might be these duke seedlings uh especially in the coldest spots the windiest spots the hottest spots so keep that in mind